In this lesson, we're going to talk about your information systems hardware. And it's really going to be just kind of a high 30,000 foot view over hardware. Uh, we'll talk a bit about the hardware platforms and things that make up the enterprise systems of today's organizations. We're going to really just see the basic concepts and history a little bit behind the different types of computers and, and the advances in information technology. But uh, by no means is this meant to uh, make you a hardware engineer here at all. It's uh, just to kind of give you the, uh, the, the high points, you know, about uh, the different components that might make up your network. So if we start with just the computer itself, it's hardware and components. And, um, and I'm going to make it short and painless. So you've got uh, the central processing unit, the CPU. We know that it's uh, made up of an ALU, the arithmetic logic unit, a uh, control unit, and internal memory. Uh, the mathematics, of course, and the logic of instructions those are carried by the, out by that ALU. The control unit's the one that can control which instructions we process if we do it all, and the use of internal memory to help in aiding of that, uh, of that capability. Other components in the uh, computer are things like the mother or system board. Uh, me memory as far as RAM, read-only or uh, random access memory, and of course your read-only memory and many other components. Uh, it might have a permanent uh, st uh, storage, whether a spinning disk or a solid state drive. Now you also have your I.O., your input-output components. And of course they pass the instructions and information into the computer or they display or record output that's generated by the computer. Obviously your keyboard, your mouse or input devices, your monitor, your printer, those examples of output that's uh, generated by the computer. There are some uh, common enterprise back-end devices uh, that you're probably familiar with. Uh, a print server is simply a, a computer that is in charge of one or more print devices that uh, deals with the permissions, the uh, authentication and authorize, uh, authorization to be able to send a print job into one of those print devices. File servers are just that, servers that store information, uh, generally files, data of some type. An application server, well, that's a server that's running special programs to offer special services. The ones that come to the top of my head are uh, your um, uh, exchange server, if you're a email, um, uh, needing email, or you can just call it, I guess, a generic email server, might be one. Uh, your uh, DNS, domain name service, that might be another application. Some of the special types of applications that we just kind of talk about uh, separately are web servers. Um, you know, a web server is something that's running um, the ability to display uh, content to people connecting over uh, generally HTML types of sessions. A uh, proxy server is uh, sometimes a security device, generally access security. It uh, basically avoids uh, letting a, a client have direct access to a server. Instead, they directly access the proxy server, and the proxy then makes the connections on behalf of that user. Uh, we have database servers, right? The storing raw data that might be used by the application servers, could be used by the web servers. Uh, but anyway, just some of these are the common things that we have that you would find in a lot of your enterprise solutions. There are some specialized devices as well. Firewalls, right? Those are uh, uh, usually a stateful packet uh, filter. Uh, all that means is that when you look at the abundance of traffic that somebody might want to use to try to enter into your network, your firewall is just going to restrict it to only certain types of uh, protocols and uh, addresses that can be accessed through the firewall. So it's blocking the vast majority of garbage from coming in and potential attacks. And whatever makes it to the firewall could still have... Uh, malware or other uh, bad intent, so you might have an intrusion detection or intrusion prevention system. The big difference between them, by the way, is one looks at a copy of the data, the other is actually in line and can stop the data. Uh, switches uh, to handle things at layer two, which we'll talk about later on. Routers to handle uh, IP addresses. Virtual private networks for uh, a lot of times for secure communications, uh, secure remote access. Load balancers to help in scaling out the amount of uh, traffic that you might be receiving to uh, be able to even the amount of uh, work done on the back-end servers. And of course, there's a bunch of risks. Risks of uh, virus and other malware. Risks that uh, hackers can get in there and uh, steal information, data theft. 
Uh, maybe data and media loss. I mean, you know, if I stole uh, information from you by coming into your company, plugging in my USB drive, downloading your important files, walking away, you lost your information, lost your data. Or you could have lost the media, stolen laptop, stolen USB drive. Corruption of data, uh, loss of confidentiality. Uh, again, you, when, uh, when you have people that can break in and start it, taking information from you. Uh, all of these are risks that we have to look at as well as we're uh, talking about that enterprise network. Now, there are some security controls you'd find generally in your network. Encryption, of course, to secure communications, to secure files at rest on a hard drive. That goes back to the confidentiality. Maybe the security controls are offering granular control. Active Directory is an example. Through the use of group policies, they can specify separate security policies for small, small groups of uh, objects within their domain services. Of course, educating uh, security to personnel uh, or, you know, just having the security personnel. But the more people that are aware of security, the better things are going to be. Uh, enforcing rules like always lock the desktop, right? That means if you're going to get up, go get a cup of coffee. You know, you sit there and you lock the desktop so it's now a password lock and uh, not open for somebody walking by to steal information. Keeping your antivirus signatures uh, up to date. Maybe even using just secure devices only.